Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that we're able to gather together. We realize many people don't have this same opportunity, and we're very thankful for it. We ask that you bless this study uh, as we look at your word. In Jesus' name we pray this. Amen. Okay. Andrew, can we use your melodious voice? Oh, yeah. A great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, and the moon appeared in her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars, and she was a child, and she cried out, being in labor and in pain to give birth. Then another sign appeared, appeared in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns on his head were seven diadems, and his tail swept away with a third of the stars of heaven. And the dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth, so that when she gave birth, he might devour her child. And she gave birth to a son, a male child, who was to rule all the nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up to God and to his throne. Then the woman fled into the wilderness, where she had a place prepared by God, so that there she would be nourished for 1,260 days. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels raged war with the dragon. And the dragon and his angels raged war. Okay, thank you. All right. In Greek, or, you know, in the literature of the Middle East, which we would call basically Eastern literature, they have a habit of starting the story again in the middle of a work. Here we find we're looking at Satan being thrown out of heaven. Where have we been before that? We're talk, we've been talking about end times. And now John says, oh, wait a minute. I'm going to go back and I'm going to talk about how this conflict started. And so that's what he's going back to. So... We have a woman clothed with the sun. Why is that unusual? Is it unusual? Or maybe had, had John been out in the sun too long that day and he's just talking nonsense. Any guesses? Okay, sun, clothed with the sun. Where have we seen that before? Was it on Jesus? Say again? Was it on Jesus? Uh-huh. Jesus or God, we see clothed with the sun. We saw it in Ezekiel. You'll see it in other passages of scripture where God is either clothed as in clouds or the sun. But we get this bright light. Here, Mary 
is clothed like him. Does that mean she is part of the Godhead? No. It just, that is the uh, vision that John had. Now, moon under her feet, and she has a, a crown of 12 stars. She's with child, okay? Great thing for Advent. The Christ child's coming. Baby Jesus is going to be born. And yet, what does the dragon want to do? Aaron, what does the dragon want to do? Kill the baby. Kill the baby. Why? Yeah, yeah, you, you got it right. Don't be afraid. No, he, he's right. The devil fears the child being born. Because what happens? What happens to Jesus' life? It is the, through Jesus' life us, the peoples, the goyim, are brought to faith. Satan loses those people. Satan's not happy about losing those souls. What is Satan's goal in life? Bingo. Misery loves company. He wants to harm God by convincing people that his way is the right way and God's way is not. How does he do that? Temptation. Huh? Temptation. Temptation? Is that the only way? No wrong answers here. So if you, you want. Well, it's through sin, it's just through temptation, so it's. I, I, would, I, would, I would give you another way that he does it. Yes, he tempts it, but he also makes things that are sins seem like they're not. Um, like distractions? They, uh, yeah, uh, distraction might be a good word. Um, what is the, when people defend the right, uh, the choice, woman's choice, what do they say? The say that again. The That's right. It is health care. It's not killing a child. It's not murder. It's not an abortion. It's health care. And what's the first thing you think about when you talk about health care? What's the first thing? Actual health. I mean, yeah. things that, uh, you know. You go to the doctor to get a checkup. Or, you know, you have a slight cold and, you know, you get medication. You get a cough medication. You may get something for the lungs and that sort of thing. But the devil has turned into its health care. It's not really a child. It's a clump of cells. So it's okay to do this health care procedure. See how he does that? He takes something that is wrong. I'm sorry. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Makes it easy to justify in my mind that it's okay. Uh, I'll ask the Makowitz kids, because uh, 
different for our generation. How many of you have seen the results of an abortion in school? Well, you're homeschooled, but your peers who go to public schools, how many of them do you think have seen it? How many of your friends have seen the results of an abortion? Are we talking the immediate results or uh -huh. the procedure? The, or the, the results of the life procedure. Life. Let me ask another question. How many of your peers have been counseled about the depression that follows an abortion? None. Because they don't want to talk about what this procedure does. They don't want people to look at it and be appalled at what happens. Um, and I forget which state, so forgive me. They just instituted a, a law saying they can abort a fetus up to the time of birth. Huh? Yeah, totally I mean, they back. Because uh -huh. what, what the Supreme Court's ruling did, it said you can't force the states to adopt this stance on abortion. It goes back to the states for their decision. And so you have states like California. He's go, uh, our governor is going out to states like Texas, Alabama, and we're the safe haven. California's the safe haven for abortion. Come to California to get your abortion. Kill your child. Uh-huh. California, California government. It's our taxes. Let me ask another question. So it's not the US government itself, no. with, with the Supreme Court ruling, the federal government cannot force states to adopt a position on abortion. What they in essence did is that said, that is a function of the state and they should they should, they should make the decision at the state level, not at the federal level. And that's why people got really upset because states like Texas, Alabama, Florida said that is something we're not going to, you know, we're not going to make easy like it had been beforehand. And that's why you had all of these people of a certain uh, political belief went ballistic and melted down because of that. You know, because they believe that it's okay to do this. You know, how many, well, you're probably more on this than this, how many babies have been aborted in the U.S.? I was thinking 60 to 70, but yeah. 60 to 7 million children aborted. Planned Parenthood, on their website about a year ago, year and a half ago, what was the number one reason for abortion? Oh, say that again. Convenience of the mother. Yes, convenience. It isn't health care, it's convenience because somebody couldn't control themselves. It isn't rape, it isn't incest, though they'd like to say, and that's their argument, rape and incest are a tenth of a percentage point, but oh, look all about the 
rape and incest that happen. Okay, I'll give you that. Okay, let, let's say it's okay in that. I don't believe it, but let's say it's okay. What about the 99.8%? <coughs> they have no... Yeah, they don't talk about it. No, they don't want to talk about it because they end up looking like idiots. They look, end up looking like, oh, we want infanticide. Now, why is a, now abortion is both morally and, and spiritually a repugnant thing. But why on a, on just on a secular level, do we want to oppose it? Violation of the uh, constitutional right to the life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. Life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness, yeah. Why else? Um, the potential, you know, you never know the outcome of that life. That's one. Then, um, uh, on a political level, constituents, you don't want to, you're terminating your future constituents, the people who would vote for you. That's one thing. Um, I think that's the top of my head. Okay. If we cheapen life, it's only a clump of cells. All right, hypothetical question. I have a 90-year-old dementia patient, chronic severe dementia totally dependent on care by third parties, family, friends, healthcare workers, whatever. How easy it is it to say, just a clump of cells, they're not really living a life, terminate it. Slippery slope. Sure. We cheapen life, we cheapen it both ends. Uh, assisted suicide or something along those lines, absolutely. Yeah. What we're doing is, in that case, we are taking the decision out of God's hands and putting it into man's. Yeah. Get off the throne, hold my beer, let me show you how this is done. It's funny, it's, you never hear of them saying, oh, well maybe we should let this, this one live. It's always a help them to assist suicide. And why? This is a little different. This gets a little harder, guys. Got people in chronic pain. Got people that um, are tired of living. I know you guys are having a hard time. How do you get tired of living? But you get old enough, you have enough health problems, and people start going, oh, you know. Visit a nursing home, find out. Oh, I'm ready to go home. I'm, I'm ready to be out of this life. I don't like the pain. I don't like this. I don't like that. And we start cheapening the, the life. We make it cheap. And that's why one of the reasons we oppose abortion, because it's wrong in our theology, but it also leads to these other things that are equally wrong. You know, we talk about um, the commandment, usually people are taught thou shalt not kill. The more appropriate um, interpretation is thou shalt not commit murder. There's a difference. What's the difference? So, okay, that's your, your part of that's correct. Um, so what happens with, um, uh, you've all read about the case of the four students in, I'm sorry, I have my back to you, Andrew. Uh, four Idaho students that were killed. I think, yeah. 
Okay. Did you read any of the details? One of them was stabbed multiple times. Yeah. I mean, not just once or twice, but 10, 12. Huh? It, it's it's intensely personal. I, I want hatred. You know. Yeah. The other ones, I think, from what I've read thus far, what you would call collateral damage. They happen to be there. Yeah. The planning, that person, yeah, you're probably right, Aaron. Malice and forethought. The other three, probably spur of the moment. Not really. I really didn't think about it. Yeah, well, that's a real strange one. Let's just get out the window. Yeah. It's a six-bedroom house, so to me, each one was in a separate bedroom. Yeah. So that person had to determine, and it was upstairs. Mm -hmm. I think if somebody came into the house, a three-story house, if I'm correct, the girl says survival at the bottom floor. So, uh, yeah, it's a very strange... Uh, but when you see these kind of things, you know, when you see a, uh, they'll call it a crime of passion, what happens when you're in a highly emotive state? Now, I know you guys have never been really, really mad, but what happens when you're really, really mad? Huh? Spontaneous actions. And why are they spontaneous? Because the part of yep, the part of your brain that Andrew just talked about shuts off. Yeah, it, it's the this the part of your brain that says, hey, this is not really right, this is wrong, shuts off. You're in almost instinct mode. You know, and if you're angry, it's, I want to lash out at that person. So who do you think did that? Don't know. Um, I know the FBI is thinking that it, there may be some relation to a previously unsolved crime. Um, but I think at least in one case, that was a, a person, they, the one girl they knew and there was some intense feeling there for that. Now, is killing in and of itself wrong? No. Why not? Uh, if justified, then it's fine, like self-defense or war. Okay. Biblically, is it? Biblically, okay. still known. Huh? Ah, so when the Israelites went into the promised land, what was one of the things God told them? Kill everything. Well, wait a minute. Killing's wrong. God, and that makes God a sinner. How can God sin? Uh, it doesn't justify it as, you know, act of war. No? How about God ordered it and it is therefore sanctioned and is therefore okay. You see, when you're taught that thou shall not kill, which is the wrong interpretation, then terminating a life, whether it is with sanction or without, is wrong. God told the Israelites, kill these people. Okay, they had sanction, so it's okay. But did God sanction murder? He doesn't. Because murder is a definite no-no. In fact, the, the commandment should say, should say, should read in English, thou shalt not commit murder. See the difference? Soldier does not commit murder fighting an enemy. So, using that as an example, Russia and Ukraine in war. Okay. Now, how do we reconcile that? 
Well, okay, the, let's take it from the Russian side first. They were, they received sanction from their government to invade a sovereign country. Was that, a, was that correct? No. Because the, the, or the, the reasoning used for that actually came to be because of what Stalin did in the 20s and 30s, mostly around 32, 33, where he starved over 12 million Ukrainians. Ukrainians have never liked the Russians since that day. They still hold a, uh, a grudge of that. And in fact, when one guy, name is Robert Conquest, wrote about the starvation in the Ukraine, he pegged it at something like six to eight and a half million. And people just were appalled. They said, you made these numbers up, it's inflated and blah, blah, blah. When the Russians let out um, during perestroika papers regarding that, they found it was close to 12 to 14 million, can't put an exact number. And so people went back to this author and got and jumped on him again and said, you got it wrong. But Stalin starved 12 million. You don't read that in history books. You hear during that time period, what do you hear? Six million Jews, five million other undesirables are killed in the camps. But we never hear about the, tw the 12 million that were killed by starvation. You go further into the 60s, Mao Zedong killed about 60 to 66 million of his own people. Never hear about it. But when now, going back to, to Lee's example, now when they're in battle and it's that, that is a, you know, that is a sanctioned killing. When they take a Ukrainian prisoner and pop him when he's in restraints, that's murder. Because he's no longer able to defend himself to fight back. Ukraine is just the opposite. In battle, it's a sanctioned killing. But if they're taking a prisoner and abusing him or killing him, then it becomes murder. Now, I'm not gonna tell you that it's all black and white. There are shades of gray in there. Um, and the US is not lily white in these, uh, their hands aren't lily white in these things. There were things that happened in, oh. How many of you have you seen um, Saving Private Ryan, the movie? No. Okay, there is a scene in there where the Americans have landed on the beach, they've taken significant casualties, and they, there's an opening to get from the beach up onto the, uh, to the heights. They go through it, and they have two Germans come out of a bunker saying, don't shoot, don't shoot, and they're shot. That's murder. And it happened more, more times than not, it happened in both theaters, Europe and the Pacific. So that's sort of the a long-winded thing of saying that's your differentiation but when it is for my convenience we see the devil we hear the devil working on that because it's well you don't want your life messed up by a baby you know and that's why and when people say well you know there's abstinence that could have prevented this issue. Oh no, you can't, can't do that. You know, I'm gonna live the, my life the way I want to. 
And it's all about self and not about something at a higher level. It's not about God. And now we see, back to Revelation, we see the devil wants to kill the Christ child. We're talking about, you know, the red dragon, the, um, you know, the red of, of sin, the antithesis of, of good, and, you know, we see that his tail swept away seven, one third of the stars of heaven and threw them to earth. That we're talking about the angels that followed Satan or Lucifer at the time. So a third of the created angels, spiritual beings, followed Satan. Okay. And he, wanted, he wants to kill the Christ child. But she gives birth. And he's going to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. And the devil wants to prevent this. Anybody seen the uh, Last Temptation of Christ movie? Okay, they have a scene where Jesus is going from being tortured, beaten, he's going up to Calvary. And although this is not a strict scriptural image, it worked pretty well. You had the devil in human form walking through the crowd and following Jesus. And he's whispering into people's ear. And you can hear the people yelling, crucify him, crucify him. He wants Jesus to die. And the devil and his minions celebrate when Christ dies on the cross. Now, in our confession, what do we say? He descended into hell. Why? Huh? That's right. It's a victory dance. He goes down there and he is preaching to the spirits down there that the third of the angels that rebelled, he's telling them, I'm alive. I have won. You're toast. Because what that means is at the end of time, the devil and his angels are going to be in hell for all eternity. Their only course of action left is not a matter of win and lose. It is now a matter of how do we take as many people with us as possible. What do you think the value of a person is if God was willing to send his son or allow his son to be crucified to save them? What does that say about the individual worth of each individual? Every person. Huh? Yeah. And the devil, what he does is with the abortion issue. It's a clump of cells. It's health care. It's not that bad. Oh, and, and the depression is overrated. You'll be okay. You have your whole life. And we end up with 60 plus million aborted babies. 60 million versus 11 and a half million killed in camps. 60 million 12 million starved in the Ukraine. 
60 million versus the 60 to 66 million killed in communist China. But people don't want to look at it that way. They want to look at it as, well, it's health care. And they'll do anything to silence the opposition. Okay, so God protects his child, gives them wing, gives the mother wings, and she goes to a place prepared by God that should be nourished 1260 days. When Herod was killing the two to five year olds, in Judea. Where was Jesus? Egypt. Yeah, in Egypt. He's in Egypt for roughly about the same time. And then when Herod was, Herod died, and the threat to Jesus was no longer there, he brought him back to Nazareth. So now he could start growing and becoming the person that would be uh, tasked with winning the salvation for all of mankind. Now, he goes, John goes on and talks about the battle between the Archangel Michael and his angels and the dragon and his thing. And we get into the, Satan and his followers were not strong enough to retain their place in heaven. They were thrown out. They were overthrown and kicked out. Um, and they uh, were thrown down to earth. And we see in, um, I think it's Daniel, we talk about the king of Tyre. We talk about the king of Tyre, and it goes back and uses some of the same language that we just read here in Revelation. The king of Tyre was Satan himself. There was a prince of Tyre who was a, a, an earthly being, but Tyre was a very evil, evil place. And Satan had a place amongst those. Okay. Okay. It, it gets to the point of what is torture and because um, it, it can take a number of um, different um, avenues. You know, there's the, the infliction of pain on an individual. That's typically what torture is thought to be. Uh, but I'm telling you the most effective ways to interrogate an individual is psychological. When we would have a Soviet defector come over, now we didn't string them up and pull the fingernails out. Best thing that we ever did was we tell them, you pick a place within a 60 mile radius of a safe house where we're keeping them. You pick a town. We don't care. You pick it the morning, we're going there. And they would, and we would drive them to a grocery store. And we'd just have them walk through. And they would see these shelves stocked with stuff. They'd see the vegetable bins, the meat counter, and they were just utterly amazed. 
because they had always been taught that our people suffered just like theirs did. In fact, they suffered more because the, communist, the communistic system was better. And they'd walk around and they're just going like, and going, and he said, you yeah, know, we can do this tomorrow. You, you pick another place. Because initially when we had tried that, the guys had said, you yeah, know, we'll take you to this town. Well, oh, that's not real because you guys artificially stocked us to make sure. Okay, 60 miles, pick a, pick a town. We don't care which direction. Huh? No, we, we would take them in a car. They're going, you know, you're in the United States. You're not, you're not going to escape. And they would sit there, but I mean, they would sit there and walk through with their mouth hanging open. And the one guy that I went, he just couldn't believe it. He couldn't believe that our government would buy tremendous amounts of milk and convert it into cheese to support our farmers. They did take one guy to, um, there's a place in Missouri, and I forget where, what the name of it is, but in the limestone caves there, part of the six billion pounds of cheese that the US government has is stored there. And they just went like, oh my. They, they couldn't believe the amount of food from an individual who's brought up in a point where you had to go in and wait in line to get a piece of meat that was that we would throw out and it's not even fit for dogs. But so did they ever get the chance to buy? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, virtually except for a few real True believers, virtually all of them came around and said, you know, this is, this is crazy. Why are we fighting this system? You know, we, we used to tell them, you give, us, you give us the American Midwest, which I, I told them I included Canada in that, and the Ukraine, and we can feed the entire world without breaking a sweat. Money. Where have all the where have all the farms gone? <coughs> where have all the farms gone? It's American. The American government pays farmers, these big corporations, not to grow. So it is cheaper for them to import it from China than it is for us to grow it here and distribute. That's not, that's not the issue. The issue was, why do we buy it there? It's purely an economic decision. Okay. There's yep. no guarantee that our American people would have a, uh, would have a, well, it's, our, our generation, the next generation might be all ba Back in the uh, 60s, 70s, they made a big thing about carbohydrates. And we've had problems with obesity and diabetes ever since. But anyway, getting back to here. And so, uh, let's see, I heard a moment said, now salvation power. Okay, Christ comes back and he is, like in the sermon today, he is making everything right. When Christ comes back, separate sheep, goats, Sheep to heaven, goats to hell. And the Lamb is victorious. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are victorious. So we, as Christians, have nothing to worry about. Questions? Comments? Comments?